It's fine, Satchel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. I think what what sport do you think you have to be the most athletic to play? Me? Oh, I thought, <laughs> no, I thought, you're, looking, you, I thought you're looking at John. For some I'm reason. saying to both of you, we're doing a show. The most thing. athletic to play. I'd say, I, <laughs> we're I literally think, doing a show. <laughs> I think uh, basketball just takes a lot of all around uh, athleticism, and I think soccer takes a lot of athleticism. Soccer. Okay. Yeah. I think soccer takes athleticism. I don't think the most. Not even close. Uh, yeah, I think you have to do more things with basketball, right? There's like so many things your brain is doing. Football. If you're playing football, though, like you're doing one thing generally at a time, unless you're the quarterback. But yeah, you gotta still be athletic as fuck. If you play wide receiver, cornerback, certain positions, you have to be but super all athletic. around athleticism. All right? around. Okay. So you're saying you know, like basketball. basketball, you have to play defense, you have to play offense, you have to. Well, the game has changed. It's evolved a lot. Because you can go back and watch old school basketball and be like, what the fuck? You couldn't dribble with both hands? <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm saying like Bob Cousy used to dribble with one hand. And he was known as the greatest point guard of their time. And it was like, he could only dribble with, okay, now I'm going to switch to this one. Gotcha. What do you <laughs> think is the sport you need to be most? I don't know. Like MMA? I don't know. Does that count? Athletic? Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. Like, I, I probably am cheating towards saying basketball. I feel like also, yeah, you, did that. you have athletic builds as well when you yeah. play basketball versus like you can play soccer and MMA. Not saying you're not athletic because you are, but you can be professional in both those sports at five one. Yeah. So <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't mean you're unathletic. Yeah. I was thinking. I was actually thinking gymnast as a really athletic like yeah if you're an olympian gymnast you are an athletic fucking person. yeah but i when i think of an athlete i think of someone that can play all sports mm. gymnast have you ever oh. seen a gymnast shoot okay have you ever seen manny pacquiao play basketball i have <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> yeah. it's horrible yeah, he tries is he it's bad? Horrible. He's okay I mean, he is not okay <laughs> he has got awful i can't say that <laughs> He's got off, but but you're like, yo, I get it. Like, you're good at, like, yeah. Floyd Mayweather's bad at basketball. Mm -hmm. I can say that. You can say that, John. Okay. Floyd Mayweather is bad at basketball. He, he just sat on my lap and farted. Of course he did. <laughs> I saw you move your head, too, and I was like, I don't oh, know what that's God. for. Ugh. Nucky, down, down. You can't fart on people's laps. Down. Like, it was fine down. if you sat on me, good but boy. just don't down. fart as soon as you get there. Down. I'll make her get down, too, if you want me to. But no, yeah, I think when I think of athlete, I think of somebody that oh. can play all sports. So like when I look at like Odell Beckham Jr., like you'll see him just go up and win me all the basketball and be like, oh shit, he can jump and do this and like okay, those he can go play any sport. LeBron James would be an All American slash Pro Bowl football player right now. He would also be an outstanding fucking outfielder. And he could probably be a first baseman to hit the ball like a fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, Don't you think the average MLS player, like the average, or maybe not MLS, but like the average, like uh, whatever, Premier League player f of of soccer in mm -hmm. the UK is is more athletic than the average NFL player? If you had to average them. If I had to average them, why would you say that? Well, because I, th I think you're right. I think like uh, like offensive players are probably more athletic than soccer players. But well, if, if you're, you're saying really the center, average. I'm not going to put the center in the conversation. Oh, okay, you're saying, but you, but you could pick one position. But I could pick multiple positions for an NFL player. For NFL. I could pick tight end. I could pick running back. I could pick wide receiver. I could pick cornerback. I could pick uh, uh, on tailback. I could pick a uh, maybe a punt return specialist. I'm interested in seeing what. Like what it would it be like for a, a really top level foot, football player to go against a really top level football player? And what? I, I like kind of like a juking. Like I want to see them like play defense on each other because I feel like the MLS player might be just as good, if not more versatile, because they have to play defense and offense on somebody. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, I just don't think that five four dude is gonna catch a ball over this dude who's six seven who plays wide receiver. There's some tall ass soccer players. No, no tall ass soccer players. Name oh. them. tall ass soccer players. Mm -hmm. You probably got people who are like six two. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's, that's really, not tall yeah, ass soccer really, players. Yeah, you don't really. They're but like they're a disadvantage. They're tight ends in football. They're like I guess those guys are all really tight, tight ends are big. Those guys are huge. They're like six eight, six seven, six six. Holy shit! Wide receivers are six five, six four, six three, baby. You got you got rare occasions where like you can be a really good wide receiver, like five eleven, and people are like, "What the fuck? How did he get here?" I want on every like football field just a regular person for scale. 
Like <laughs> <laughs> the referee. <laughs> the referee does work, yeah. but he may have played football. Right, right, right. <laughs> He's still probably. Crazy. I'm just talking about sports, guys. I like it. We can go to the first article about sports. Do you want? Yeah. To? Why not? Should we say hello? Fuck these people. Ha- okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, let's say hello, right? Hi, guys. Hi, kids. Do you like <laughs> violence? <laughs> Oh, welcome to the Wine and Weed show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Woo. We're Energy. Back. Uh, I'm Chris Reinecker, a.k.a. The Connoisseur, a.k.a. Uh, la La La. Yeah. A.k.a. Goop in your gap. The Goop in your gap, a.k.a. Your new baby daddy. Yeah. You brought that one back. Yeah. It's old school. Yeah. One. A.k.a. Um, uh, do you like that? Do you a- like that? AKA uh, the 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 cor- cor- Corona Cowboy. Yeah, okay, okay. Co- the Corona Cowboy. Yeah, was that one from before? Yeah, yeah it was like hat, it was right? my quarantine alter ego. Oh. I had a hat, but I guess quarantine's over now, right, guy? AKA the haircut haver haver. <laughs> Okay, the haircut haver. <laughs> haircut haver. Things have opened back you up. Got a haircut. Yeah, I dove in. I hate know? that I didn't know this. <laughs> really? I mean, my hair was like huge for like. I what, hate that I truly weeks. didn't know this. Really? I think if you didn't cut the beard, nothing. It all was just one thing to me. Oh yeah, I mean, it, was, it all came together. So like the moment you haven't cut the beard, have you? No. Okay, then. so like. I used the yeah. So. I missed. I it. went. I went. I like. It looks off. good though. Now that you said Thanks, it. Thanks, man. They yeah. shot a. They shot a, a t- thermometer gun at my forehead. Yeah. There was like nobody else in the um, salon. I I felt I felt too insecure to post it on Instagram because I didn't want to look like a bad. There was everybody in the influence. fucking salon. First of all, <laughs> uh, he's like there was nobody else in the salon. It no, was there were some. There were pe- people in each corner. Okay. Yeah. The, um, how did you feel with the, the thermometer gun? Uh, it made me feel safe. All all their actions made me feel safe. How you know? Shout out fake. to Martinez Samuel okay, Salon. Nah, it's gotta be real. Because you <laughs> shouted them out. I said, "How did you know it wasn't fake?" And then you shouted them out, and I was like, "No, nah, it has to be real. We can't." Shit yeah, <laughs> no, it felt real. I mean, every everything felt. It felt like they were like my AC guy. taking that shit seriously. But I did drive around, and just everything's open now. Yeah, it's bizarre. Well, it'll, be, cl- it'll be closed back in a couple weeks. <laughs> we'll be locked right. back down. My uh, my AC guy came to fix the AC, and he had one of those, and he was just shooting it at everything. He was just shooting at all the vents, being like, that one's 60 degrees, this one's 61. And I was <laughs> no. like, I swear to God. I was like, fucking cool. That vent might have cold. And he shot, it, he shot it at me, and I was like, that's fucking cool. Now I was, I was a little cold. <laughs> and I was like, I should get my temperature up a little bit. Mm. It was like 89, 87. Oh. And I was like, that thing can't be 100% accurate, because I don't feel cold at all. I also got a COVID test this week, and I'm negative, Ooh. guys. Wait, yeah. I'm negative on COVID, which means Congrats. you guys are probably negative. You got a blood on, test? Yeah. No, I did a swab in my mouth. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's, that's like currently. Yeah, like that day. Yeah, I you did didn't have, have COVID. COVID. Yeah. Oh, okay. When was that? So you might have it again. <laughs> it's like five days ago. Oh, okay. You might <laughs> have it again. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yep, just happened. Well, and, 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 this is, and this is my co-host. Sterling Stilo Brim, a.k.a. Skateboard Steve, aka S to the B, turn your best to the Brie, aka is a third leg, man. It's just me, aka uh, um, Black Mama, Mama. aka uh, 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 Concerned concern Father, aka father. Steezington, aka Steezington. your stylist, stylist, aka uh, oh, ooh, is that your chick? Why oh, she got on this dick? Uh, aka um, Damn. 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 Man. Damn, man. AKA uh uh ooh shit. That's it. I think I'm done. I don't know my AKAs, guys. I've, I've I don't even know how to do this show anymore. I don't know what's going on. Damn man, AKA shit, that's it. Oh yeah. shit, that's it. Yeah, that's a new one. Um, and with this is always John Ross. Hello, I'm John Ross, a.k.a. Brown Peter Griffin, a.k.a. Spider-Man's best friend, a.k.a. The Gorilla in Manila, a.k.a. The Article Assassin, and of course, Big Sexy with the Glasses. Hey. Big Sexy with the Glasses. Uh, well, boom. not as always, you know. You said with us as always. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, he is with us always. Week past. I, guess I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, That's God, fair. are you going to be happy when you can stop saying Spider-Man's best friend and 
have a Filipino Spider Man, you can just say Spider Man, John, because you're get, you're looking I'm at Spider Man. You just like Spider Man. Like we need to we need to organically get you to <laughs> right? just Spider Man. The reboot. Yeah. Spider Man's friend. Yeah. Spider Man. Man. Yeah. 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 Spider. Spider-Man. Just a spider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you become a spy. Yes. Spy. <laughs> <laughs> and then spa. <laughs> Got that spa. Got that spa. Spa. Oh, um. I'm looking at all this weed on this. Uh, Don't touch my weed, man. We volunteered your weed. We're smoking your weed. It all looks so good. But I brought some Alien Labs, which is some of my faves. Some of your faves. Sometimes you can't handle it, though. (laughs) I know, but I still love it. (laughs) That's why it's his fave. Yeah, exactly. Uh, We're going to get some Sherbaccio, courtesy of Alien Labs. And uh, we realize that we don't have any wine here. Do we really need wine, guys? I don't care. Quit Do we whining. need more? Um, and we just want to have a fun show this week. Hey, what do you guys think about? Should we start getting like we should get guests next week and shit? Like we should just chill the fuck out, right? We should... All right, we're gonna s- drink some Dolce Cabana, Castello di Neve, Neve. Mm. Barbaresco. Mm. You killing that? Chris. It's from Italy. Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> okay, this is insane. Where do you get this? Italy. Uh, without any further ado, let's hop into the stories of the week. Uh, so uh, this headline is LeBron James probably should have been on the NBA player call with Kyrie Irving on Friday. Uh, Kyrie Irving was a major voice in the NBPA's call on Friday night with 80 or so players going back and forth on their concerns about the league's potential return from its coronavirus induced hiatus at the end of July. There were a lot of big names on the call, Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, Donovan Mitchell, but there was one big name that was missing. It was LeBron James. James has been adamant about the NBA moving forward with its plan to continue, even amid the social unrest the country is in right now. One of the reasons Irving and other players cited the pause on the league's return was the current state of the country right now. Protests have broken out en masse across the country because of the killing of George Floyd and a number of other unarmed black people at the hands of the police. Many NBA players, including Irvin, Irving, have uh, taken to the streets to those protests. He believes that the NBA's return would provide people with a distraction from those protests, but James doesn't believe that these things are mutually exclusive. James believes he can play basketball and affect social change all at once. But like, so there's this huge phone call with all the NBA players, a private call or like, yeah, a, like a public Zoom, Zoom call? So calls. Kyrie so. Irving is the vice president, one of the vice presidents for the Players Association right now. So Which that, is like the union of basketball The union players. for, yes. Okay. Uh, Chris Paul is the president. So it was a call that had Chris Paul, Kyrie Irving, Carmelo Anthony, and some others on this call, and Dwight Howard and some others who um, actually opposed to starting the season back. No, I had to like let it. It's interesting. It's juicy. But it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It does. It's juicy, but it's good. Um, Kyrie Irving. Oh, it's, oh, I'll just get into it. It's very interesting. It's very, okay, it's I'm into it. It's very interesting. Um, LeBron James is obviously the face of the NBA. Right. LeBron James is the representative right now of the NBA. If he says something, people kind of feel as though this had to go through the proper channels at the NBA. Because LeBron James is the face of the NBA. The same way if Michael Jordan said some stuff back in the 90s, people would feel like that was a statement not only for Michael Jordan, but also from the NBA. Okay. So LeBron James said that he feels as though they should finish the season and that he feels as though he can continue to fight for a social reform, a police reform, and justice while playing the rest of the season. Um, a lot of... People online have said, what's the correlation? I don't get the correlation between the two. Why are you guys feel as though this thing has to, you know, be connected to the other? Why can't you guys go play? The money should go toward, you know, black communities. If you guys play for the rest of your season, you make more money. That's more money you guys can be using to make your voices louder. This, that, mm. and the third. That's one argument. Another argument is it's a fucking, distra- a fucking distraction right now. It's a fucking distraction. Basketball is a distraction. Basketball has been a healthy distraction for us in a world that obviously this has been going on for a long time. Um, you know, um, you know, targeting African Americans or, or um, brown people within this country, and and um, just police brutality within this country, and the momentum that we have right now. People feel as though we've never had this kind of momentum in the country going toward actual change. Um, so they find it a, to be a rather peculiar time that now the NBA is back 
and the NBA wants to come back, and they want to have this huge kind of AAU style, tournament style thing taking place at Disney World where all these players for three months are locked in Disney World. They can't go anywhere. All they can do is eat there, watch movies, everything on the property, but they can't go anywhere. And they get tested every two days. for Yes. Dollars. Kyrie Irving had a problem with that because he felt like a couple things. Number one, I'm willing to die for my fucking youth. I'm willing to die for black people right now. And it is not the time. We are a fucking distraction. If we bring back the NBA, it is a distraction. And then we will forget because we will be in our homes being okay. We're watching the NBA going on all day. And we will forget what's going on outside of our homes. Um, Kyrie Irving also felt like, well, you know what? We're players in this league, but we're not slaves in this league. Why were we not called one time? to discuss the actual plans and bringing back the season, the different things going on within the season. You guys literally just made a decision on your own and said, you guys are playing. This is the day you're playing. You guys show up or you don't. And they're like, we ain't never ran our shit like the NFL. Why are you treating us like this? Mm. Like, you've always asked players for their opinions, voted on different things. They had no vote. And then on top of that, the Disney employees can actually leave off campus. They can leave off site and go, you know, obviously live their lives, their normal lives, and then come back to work, live their lives, leave, go back to work. They had a problem with that because they're like, we're trapped in this one place for three months. We can't bring anybody in. We can't do anything. Why can't the Disney player, I mean, Disney people leave as much as they want, but we can't. Why do Disney employees get side chicks and we don't? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it was like, this is some bullshit. But they also was like, yo, you know what? Of course you guys are getting paid this. So now it's been kind of this tug of war versus going on in the NBA right now. People who believe the season needs to go on and people who believe the season needs to stop. Okay. So um, it's just been interesting because me, for I, for one. Yeah, where do you fall I on fall this? on Kyrie Irving's side. I agree with Kyrie Irving. I think that a, some plan needs to be put in place for the players because their argument is, well, everybody don't make the same amount of money as Kyrie Irving. That's a fair, a fair argument. Hmm. Kyrie said, we can all agree on that. Only maybe 20 players in the NBA make the kind of money Kyrie makes. And then on top of that, those are the only players who have guaranteed checks who are giving them 90% of their checks up front. LeBron gets 90% of his check up front. If you say I'm signing you, LeBron, to this deal, guess what? You're giving me, if I'm making $38 million this year or $40 million this year, you're going to give me my 35 up front. And then LeBron James could literally break his ankle like the second game and he'd still get that money? That's his money. It's guaranteed. I was, I was the NBA is different works. than the NFL. It's guaranteed money. Oh, okay. The NFL is in the slave business. This nigga don't mean to us no more. He got hurt. Shoot him in the back. Oh my <laughs> God. So that's how the NFL <laughs> operates. Uh, so it's a different world. Oh, so the man. NBA is like, hey, you know what? You we signed you for that contract. But I follow on the on the, I think the problem with this whole thing is that number one, no one wants to go against LeBron James. He's LeBron James. He has been the voice for not only the NBA, but for the black community a lot as well. So to hear him say, Hey, I'm gonna I think we can keep playing. This is one of my rare times I think LeBron is being a hypocrite. Why? Yeah, why do you think LeBron? Because LeBron's team is in playing. first place. Mm. It's only 22 games away from LeBron getting his fourth ring. Mm. Mm. Now we come back for one more season. If LeBron gets to four or five rings, you may just now throw out the window that, LeBron, that, that Michael Jordan's the GOAT. LeBron's the GOAT now. Mm. But for me, myself, I think this is such a pivotal moment for LeBron James that he needs to make the right decision. And I think the right decision is postponing the, the league, and the NBA is going to do whatever LeBron James says they should do. I think that they should postpone the league and postpone this season. And I'll say this, if I had to say one thing to LeBron James, um, let me look it up just so I can get my facts. I know Muhammad Ali had the record of five losses. 56 wins, five losses. Um... And look, and Muhammad Ali goes down as the greatest of all time. Um, from our perspective in black culture, as the greatest boxer for, of all time. Uh, not only for what he did in the ring, but also what he did outside of the ring. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali was someone that stood up against the government in a time when they wouldn't speak up for us. They wouldn't defend us. They wouldn't protect us. Still <laughs> currently happening today. But at the time, they wouldn't do that stuff. Muhammad Ali said, I'm not going to Vietnam and fighting against no Vietnamese. Ain't no Vietnamese ever did anything to me these white people with this country have though mm -hmm. so they put him in prison they put him in prison and say oh you don't want to fight for this country well guess what now you're going to prison he said i'm fine with that 
I'm fine with that. Um, LeBron isn't in that same situation, but I think he became the GOAT or the greatest of all time because what he stood for. And I think rings are one thing. Six rings is amazing. Michael Jordan has it. LeBron has three right now, and he could be on his way to four if the season does start. But he could be on his way to seven if he truly stood with the people. And he'd be, be looked at as the greatest of all time over Michael Jordan, anything that he could ever do. If he stood with the people right now and said the momentum is too strong and we would be nothing but a distraction to what's going on. Uh, I think that they need to put a plan in place that says, you know what, our lower tier players who don't make as much money, we need to, as the, the, the union or the player association, we need to put a loan together and basically loan this money out to the rest of the players to make sure they can still cover their lifestyles. And unless you're just living behind, behind your means, they would can't cover that. But like cover your paychecks and lifestyles and everything else to say, you know what, I know that I don't want to put you guys in the position either because this is weird because now you don't have a job. So I'm going to say, you know what? Don't worry about work. Come stand with me. Come stand with me. We're going to all put enough money up. If we put 2% of our contracts, even the top 20 players, it might cover the rest of the fucking league. So it's like, yeah, that's not a real reason to say, oh, well, the and, and I just, everybody I've been seeing right so you, online, like, you, yeah, well, you, you, gotta, you think everything that's sourced from LeBron James just like, it is that kind of like that he wants that ring. Like, and then he figured out other ways to justify um, I think he'll keep or, fighting. Or I think he'll keep think, fighting. Because he is, right? He did. We have a few other articles. He has a voter One thing. Of is, it, yeah, yeah, of course. Dealing no. with voter suppression, which is going to be a huge thing. Because there could be an argument, maybe this is the argument he's making in his head. It might be Stem because he wants the ring. But, like, he'll, I mean, I mean, he'll stay in front of people in a way. So it's like. When is LeBron James not in front yeah, of people? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, when are these NBA superstars not in front of people? I I would say LeBron is, but I would say is James Harden not is is, is Giannis Antetokounmpo not is 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 like um, outside of the season I th think most of the time they're I'm still reading superstars a, online. Uh, Kyrie Irving our, our Irving article I'm I'm reading mostly about him in relationship to basketball. I guess maybe maybe that's a bad example. But yeah, but <laughs> what what does that matter? Kyrie Irving is making two hundred something million dollars from playing basketball, and then his Nike contract will probably give him another three hundred something million over the years. What the fuck does it matter if your people can stop dying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I was just wondering if it was really his thought, if his thought process really started at the ring or if he really believed this stuff. I think it's both. No, I think it starts at the ring. I think his thought process starts at the ring. And mm. I think that he has a strong enough voice that he believes he can still get whatever his part is, his duty done while still going after this ring. But he's not... I think, he's, I think he was locked at home watching Last Dance like the rest of us, watching Michael Jordan, uh, watching his greatest hits and his highlights, and it got him inspired to want to take over that top slot and to want to beat Michael Jordan like any other player would if you're in that, in that position. But I think that he could truly beat Michael Jordan's top spot from doing something off the court, something way more powerful than he could ever do on the court. Because LeBron James is, what, 35 years old? He probably won't get to three more rings, just being real. But he don't need to. Yeah. He's been a voice for us. We've never had an NBA. Maybe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is. Yeah. I was gonna say it's, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is one of the greatest, but then his works outside the quarter even make him even greater. Top three. You know? Even greater. Yeah. Even, even even greater. Even when I was a kid, though, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was always my favorite player. That's it was cool. always my like. Yeah, Jordan's good, but you ever see these old stuff from this guy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, <laughs> who's only playing when we were really little? I mean, Kareem still has the, the most points ever in NBA history. Yeah. LeBron will break that. Yeah. LeBron will beat that. But, yeah, no, I just think that it's such a pivotal moment, and I think that the problem with it is that Kyrie, in his statement, wasn't – he didn't – Kyrie is a very passionate person. I know yeah. Kyrie somewhat. He's a very passionate person, so I think he speaks from his heart. And I think that he didn't. I think that's really cool. I, yeah, I didn't think that he necessarily wrote out or articulated exactly what he was feeling as much as he is in pain right now. Mm -hmm. And he is like, what the fuck are we even talking about? We should be playing basketball. That's when, a great voice to have, though, in in that elite circle, you know? Yeah, and, but there have been NBA players who have always come out and, like, not I won't say spoke against him, but just saying, like, we don't all make the same amount of money as you. I think mm. that we should stay focused and uh, we can still do the good fight while we play basketball. And it's like, the one of the players who said that was Austin Rivers, who like is comes from money, and like he also has money. It's like, yeah, I hear you. I just think that they need at least twelve players, 
12 players who are actually in playoff contention right now to step up and say, hey, Lou Williams was one of them. He's on the Clippers. The Clippers can still win a championship. And he said, I don't think we should play. I think it's a distraction. They need more stars, though. If James Harden or Russell Westbrook or any of those guys comes out and speaks on this and says we shouldn't play, then LeBron will be forced to at least re-examine. And I, I have a hard time believing that LeBron James and his team will say no to, to you know, this movement twice. Mm. And then there's another article about him that had to do with Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong basically just called him out for saying, telling them that, hey, this stuff is more important than social justice is more important right. and justice are more important over there in Hong Kong. And then now that it's going on in the NBA and here in America, he's like, but we should keep playing. And it's like, you just told Hong Kong to stop that shit. You just, you just called them out. Do you think there's like, do you think it's all based on winning or do you think that anything in LeBron James's mind is about the economy or like, that's just not really a factor. What do you mean? You just, I don't know. I'm just seeing that if uh, the NBA started in a world at uh, Walt Disney world, there's just probably gonna be a huge spike in the economy because there's some or just there's something more being of course done. the cba stands to make so much money i think yeah. that a lot of people are in do you the, think that's a factor at all for lebron course, or do course. you think it's it's mainly starts out you'd be crazy to think lebron james paid. is a billionaire already he uh, runs multi-businesses and for you to say or for you to think that he's not thinking about the economic aspect of it we you'd be crazy of course he is he he i mean and his whole entire thing was that we could bring more money in and give it back to the community right yeah but but also i mean you could have been doing that i mean and you are doing that like like right now we don't need mm -hmm. the fucking distraction mm -hmm. and that's what's gonna happen i like your idea for those 12 people could pay off every because I, I i do feel bad for those like you know basketball players i you're like a bench player, but you're doing your best. So you're excited to yeah. be in the NBA. And you're like, damn. What? I, I'm unemployed. You know what the, you know what the minimum is? <laughs> Collecting my stimulus check. Do you know what the minimum is in the NBA? What? $900,000. Oh, really? You feel bad? Minimum. You still feel bad? No. Okay. <laughs> it's the no. minimum is $900,000. I thought minimum was going to be like... I thought minimum might be like $100,000, $200,000. $900,000. Unless I, you're on like a 10-day contract or on like, oh, your G League back and forth. But then they even still have minimums for those players that if they bring you up, they still cover a certain amount of money. You're not making close. a hundred hard to feel bad. A hundred thousand dollars. And dollars. You wouldn't, no one's making a hundred thousand dollars in the NBA. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking about my hypothetical, even though now it doesn't matter. But my hypothetical is those people bought houses that they plan on paying off with their NBA player salary. <laughs> and now they're not make an nba player sorry but well, it looks like that's not the, the this is the problem the cba has this huge deal with all of these different television networks that they cancel the season they have to so find a way to cover all of this but the players are now speaking about this and it's like hey i'm sorry players stop making this your fucking issue business happens all the time people have to restructure deals and figure out stuff and figure out how to make things work don't make it your issue and get in your head and be like but they lose their money with the billionaires the billionaires lose their fucking money first of all these teams it's 30 teams right they're owned by who billionaires all billionaires all of them are billionaires who do what? They also own other businesses, tech businesses and everything else, industrial businesses and everything else. So these are these are fucking power players. These are people who make moves. If you fuck up their dollar and say we're boycotting, we're not playing, guess what? They'll figure this shit out. Yeah. They'll figure it out quick. You're playing with a lot of motherfucking money right now. They'll figure it out quick. I You've convinced me over definitely the last couple months, if not before that, that like, disrupting and we've seen it disrupting gets something done it when, does. whether even though it's uncomfortable it's very to uncomfortable. have to uh, oh no a, like something got broken into or blah 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 like that was getting coverage that was getting things moving i was getting things done it's not we we wish everybody out of the, out of the goodness of their heart would do the right thing but sometimes it takes disrupting things to make things happen so i that's true I think you're right. Very point of view. So yeah, just giving you guys a little sports recap. I know you guys love that. I know you guys love the NBA. Uh, John, like, name ten players right now. Go. Uh, NBA. <laughs> NBA is oh, not a player. Oh God, Michael Jordan. Uh, no, Kobe yes, that no, played. Current, in, current. Are you looking oh, them up? No, I I cannot. Probably, you couldn't name ten players. Could you name five? Not. Probably not. You could name five NBA players. Current players, probably not. LeBron you, you, James. You, one. 
Next door. Yeah, you want to go? Uh, you you want to get high Let's and smoke talk too. about stupid stuff? Let's smoke. Yep. One, two, uh... All right. SpongeBob SquarePants just came out of the closet. In news that will be unsurprising to many, Nickelodeon just appeared to make the announcement that the beloved children's TV character SpongeBob SquarePants is a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community. The network named Pride Month uh, marked Pride Month with a post on Twitter stating that it was celebrating hashtag Pride with an LGBTQ plus community and their allies uh, this month and every month, accompanied by artwork of SpongeBob, Schwash Schwartz from Henry Danger, and Korra from Avatar The Legend of Korra, all in rainbow tinted hues. Are those other two characters yeah. gay? So like Korra, officially gay? Korra is canonically bisexual. Like she, I watched all of Legend of Korra. She's canonically bisexual. Meaning I've, she has love interest. She has a love in interest the with show. She has a male love interest in the show, and in the finale, she kissed the girl, and then they walked away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she cheated. <laughs> uh, she broke up with a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. that cop. That was, that was so very hard. Was very, <laughs> I do not know uh, who sh Swash is. For. I gotta know if Swash is like for sure gay. Okay. Is in the cool? show. Okay, it says it is unclear, however, whether what do you want them to do in a fucking Nickelodeon show, Chris. You want them to fuck? I want to see him having sex. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I. They're I, gay. They're just happening. Uh, I got links to that. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, like because if they put them with two other people who are, can, right, I like right, the right, word right. you use, can Cano canonically, yeah. canonically gay. I love that you didn't even question SpongeBob being gay. I was well, like, it just makes I, because sense. Because but I I, like, I'm saying that would be an announcement, right? The, yeah. If the other two were already announced as gay, then like. It's super an announcement that SpongeBob's gay. Yes, the I mean I'm really excited about it. He could be, he could be on, on the in, in the spectrum. He could be asexual. He could. Be, I kind of think know. he's an asexual, but he, maybe he's a gay. No, homie. He you know he definitely fucked. Uh, 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 what's his name? Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Patrick feels more they had, gay. He had a Squidward. Star. No, Patrick had put a star in his Everyone own asshole. Feels a little gay. No, yeah. he, he had a like flag it. star. He had a flag in his asshole that says SpongeBob on it, like a, a while back. Like oh wow! Movies. It was like a it marked oh. his territory, and I saw that, and I was like, "Are oh, they gay?" And that's cool, but like that was an interesting way and kind of aggressive of announcing it. And then he came out <laughs> as gay. I was like, "Told you." Yeah. I don't feel like people were that shocked by SpongeBob being gay. No, it was just like, oh, people that makes were like, sense. yeah, SpongeBob's yeah. gay. No, yeah, no, that's no, our gay friend, that. SpongeBob. Yeah. yeah, everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob's hilarious and fabulous yeah. and gets really excited. He wears capris and long socks. <laughs> He's yeah. into fashion, guys. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, he has a little bit of a drag name. Like, he's like his parents named him Robert, and he's like, I'm not Robert, I'm SpongeBob. Yeah, I like you that. Know? I like, like that. It was like nobody's ever been called SpongeBob before. That's but he true. took he kinda of took a plain name and reinvented it. I like it. I think he's got a lot of personality. Do you think anybody else is like a part of the LGBT community? In cartoons? No, on SpongeBob. Oh. It feels like mm, Patrick. Patrick and him. is. Although yeah. I do think they're I, on the I think they're best friends though. I don't I can I, see Squidward. I can I definitely could, see Squidward. I can see Squidward yeah. being like super angry because he can't be who he is. And yeah, I want right. him to be proud of him. And who it's he totally is. fine. Yeah, Squidward, yeah. if you like, whatever, Squidward. If you need like, an intervention, Squidward. Yeah, he's dealing with something, right? <laughs> he's, he's definitely dealing with something, yeah. He's yeah. never, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I don't know if I know the show well enough to know, has, has uh, Squidward ever had like a date or a companion or anything? No, oh, I don't think so. Because he's, like, he's like, he's, can he's pretty canonically yeah. lonely. Yeah, he has, canonically like, lonely. Uh, Plankton like, has a, a robot girlfriend like so. no but, but yeah point is abusive. yeah so there's yeah. some like point is abusive yeah Plank i don't is abusive for sure he's not a good person, at, a good all. person at all yeah yeah, yeah he yeah oh mr krabs is toxic as fuck yeah, yeah. and he's controlling of his daughter he has like a, let her live for sure i don't even think that's his real daughter because she's a whale that and is so, a whale how yeah. would that be his daughter i don't understand yeah oh my he god he adopted yeah. he adopted her I, I, he had to adopt assume yeah you have to assume or else, like, maybe it's, like, some huge story in Bikini Bottom of, like, a child that went missing and then we didn't realize Mr. Crab has had the whale the whole time. Mm. Yeah. She and didn't know she was that child. Makes her, and makes her work, like, child labor? She no, she doesn't work. She doesn't work, work there. No, no she's rich. She, no, yeah. she looks like a rich kid. Yeah. She looks like a rich kid, bro. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I don't even watch SpongeBob, and I actually think I was too old. I think I just missed it. <laughs> Did you just miss it? I feel like I just missed it, but it's so good that, like, I even as a teenager, I'd, like, be like, this is pretty good. Yeah, I like yeah, a good right. cartoon. Yeah, yeah, no. It's so what's going to change on the show now that SpongeBob is gay? Nothing? I don't think anything. I don't, I don't think, think anything, anything should. Yeah. I think maybe he's just been gay the whole time like Dumbledore. Yeah, right. Sure. You know, or, no, don't do that. Where the, the guy's like, of course, he's been gay. 
Right. But Dumbledore, nobody liked that one. Dumbledore was gay the whole time. No, stop it. Yeah, she knew from the beginning Dumbledore is gay. People are very in the in other pride news. No, people, are very people mad. hate this news, Chris. Yeah, it's, that it's, Dumbledore it's kind gay? of polarizing. Yes. Yeah. everyone's like, you no, shut the fuck you up. You it. never fucking thought said about that anything. Before? No, you never. They think she's bullshitting, and then she like, just why'd you came that? out and said that. J.K. Yeah. Rowling is not very good with LGBT no. things. No, and she just, nobody she's believes in trouble her right now because she was just saying one of the trans characters in her book isn't really a woman or something like that because she's. Oh, I didn't. I I just saw her making comments about what is. What isn't a woman? But why'd you just like, say like what Dumbledore? What the fuck are you even? How? Yeah. Like why are you even saying this? Why are you yeah, just defending? Shut Dumbledore? up! What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Like, shut These up. are my characters. Who cares? How do I explain something? She didn't have oh. to say anything. Yeah. Like, like literally, these books were gone, and then she came back and was like, right. "You know, Dumbledore was gay, right?" And yeah. like, "You made that up right now." <laughs> you literally <laughs> just made that up right yeah, now. Yeah, but could be right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what she. No, that's what she did. Though, you know? And everybody was like, "You need to chill out with that shit." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, but he could be gay. Yeah. A few people who were like big, big fans were like, no, <laughs> uh, I would have saw that. Yeah, yeah. I've written this more times than you have, even though you wrote it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. Well, I'm I'm proud of SpongeBob, and I'm proud of every everybody who's I'm LGBT, not. Who's I don't like celebrating it. proud to, pride this month. I don't like it. I'll tell you why I don't like it. I don't like the fact that <laughs> Nickelodeon came out for SpongeBob. Like, why would you not let SpongeBob announce on his own? It's a little that's passive fair. aggressive. It is. Yeah. It's like us as a company, we want to tell you SpongeBob's gay. It's like, did SpongeBob say he was okay with letting us know that he was a part of the LGBT community? Yeah, I think you should come out on your own terms. You should come out on your own mm-hmm. terms. It should have been like an episode where it was like a big episode and they didn't say anything and they let SpongeBob come out in his own way or, or have a pride parade within an actual episode and spongebob oh, leads yeah. it it's something cool like that nickelodeon coming out and being like spongebob guys i have a secret about spongebob feels a little bit like fuck you nickelodeon unless you want to work together on some stuff because i'm always down for that <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most pa- it's like a passive aggressive way to come out as gay and i also love nickelodeon <laughs> Love to work, especially Nicktoons. I love Nicktoons. Nicktoons, right? Nicktoons, <laughs> Nicktoons this is becomes, a rerun channel. This becomes a pitch for us to work okay, with Nicktoons. Look. We're sellouts. Like, like we just went against them. No, and like, but just, we can help. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you're right though. Why? Uh, yeah, I saw your face. I saw I'm my peripheral vision. Both of your faces. I was like, I didn't like this. Both of you were like, Is he about to get canceled? What is he about to say? Also, let's, <laughs> say like, let's say Nickelodeon is SpongeBob's friend, right? And SpongeBob was like, "Yeah, man, I'm gay." And then that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say, let's say Wrigley to me was SpongeBob like, woke up to this news. Wrigley Chris. was like, "I'm gay." <laughs> and then SpongeBob I, woke up to this news. He, he, had, he had 114 missed calls <laughs> and he had 72 text messages being like, "Whoa, bro!" And he was like, "Nickelodeon told my business. It was a secret." It's also like in the morning, like. Like I go like happy birthday to all my gay friends and one of the pictures is of Wrigley and Wrigley's like you just told everybody I'm gay yeah that's what I'm saying like yeah. Wrigley's like I pff, I got a Twitter of my own yeah yeah I could have put that out you're high <laughs> <laughs> I just up. said that <laughs> what's the other one we got um there's a, another funny one a Florida man fist fights alligator to save dog I thought that was interesting did I thumbs up that yeah you, it was I think I'm up. dumb enough to yeah. Do you want to I go just, another one? Or? We can keep going. Over okay, okay. I don't care. A Florida man saves a dog from alligator every week. All right, let's get off of it. We the just fist don't fight. hear about specific, it. Okay. Dylan specifically says fist fight made me laugh yeah. as if they agreed to a fist <laughs> oh, fight. Yeah, yeah. As if the alligator was like, oh, I terms? wanted to use my tail, but I guess I'll keep these hands. <laughs> alligator That's with boxing why I gloves. thought it was funny. Because it was like, yeah, I got to reach. Mm-hmm. This guy could never get a hold of me. <laughs> Agree. This feels rigged. Fight. Can we at least fight in the swamp? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chuck E. Cheese? I don't know. This oh, Chuck E. Cheese this is, is going crazy. down. No, it's, it's, it's sad. Right. It's sad. Right. You know what it is? It's the same day. The day you remember that Toys R Us was taken away mm. from you. And they were like, Toys R Us is done. And you're like, there's no way Toys R Us is done. It's Toys R Us. That's what this article reminds me of, John. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, but now they're just bankrupt because the pizzas weren't selling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that that was a grasp for some business. They tried. Man. Yeah. They're like, we're changing our name. And everyone was like, lame. And they were like, okay, we're actually changing. <laughs> <laughs> the truth? You're, I have nothing. You're, 
Your childhood is over. Guess what, guys? We're more sophisticated and we're changing our name. We don't like it. Well, good news, guys. We're done. <laughs> well, in that case. <laughs> in that case. Turn the lights off. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want to buy any animatronics? <laughs> Ooh. Animatronics aren't really a thing anymore. Yeah. Well, I would get one though. They're so creepy. They're so scary. So creepy. Sure. <laughs> so fuck. Did we ever like it? Did we ever? Uh, no. I don't think no. so. No. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Did you just have a realization yeah. that we never liked yeah, animatronics? Never liked that shit. Even when we were kids. No, no we Holy never liked shit. It. We didn't like They were no. like the bands playing. We were like, oh, God. <laughs> and then and like, were, my mom is more excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah your parents would make you say it was so creepy. All of them were on cocaine. Yeah. All the animals were on cocaine. You were like, oh, this dude's eyes are God. crazy. They had three movements. They had here and then like here and then here and yeah, they would no matter all matter what like, the instrument was yeah, yep. yeah so they yeah. had three that was, the, that was the drums the violin three yeah, yeah, settings yeah. it was yeah. like i feel like the drum had like five because oh, yeah. every time he do something and you were like that is a full-on robot it yeah was, yeah because the crazy head turns too like, oh, just, yeah. that was a person yeah. That was I one, always thought that shit was That a was person. one guy who just right. played drums. <laughs> now we're realizing we kind of liked it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hated it. No, I, I, hated, it. I, I, I hated it specifically. I thought it Chuck was e. creepy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I look back at Chuck E. Cheese and like I really look at Chuck E. Cheese, it was always kind of like cheap. I also just kind of realized that, like, for context, if anybody's younger, at every Chuck E. Cheese, there was a band pit with an animatronic. Band I think of four. If you're not oh, old yeah, enough to know, know that, they should I mean, know no, that. Right? What were they? They were a kangaroo. Oh Jesus! It wasn't um, a kangaroo. Uh, a mouse, a bear. I don't remember. I keep there confusing was a mouse. them with a McDonald's. Ape, well, it was a rat. Drugs. Let me Google it. Uh, and drums. <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> Maybe also drugs. Yeah, they're on drums. An ape. There were different ones. I think for different Chuck E. Cheese. Let's see. You think? Oh, was there, was, there was there was there's five of them. Oh my God! They're all they all look horrible. Okay, so <laughs> the, the Italian pizzeria dude is the one on the drums. Wait, what's his middle mustache. name? Oh, shit. I don't know. This is I'm sorry. The Italian pizzeria dude? You know, like, dude? Cause, okay, so you know how they rebranded as, like, that name? So that name is his name, is the... I the, had animals on, on animatronics. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, so, so he's the only human, and then the rest are animals. Yeah, oh, okay. I remember this shit. There's like a dog oh, playing Okay, the that guitar. makes sense. It was that fake ass and Barney. And then there's Grimace. Yeah. It was that fake ass Barney. This fucking Grimace. What? This is the this is what and nightmares this is are made. My of. least favorite one. I there is a duck in a she was cheerleading sassy, costume. Yeah. She was sassy. Yeah. Sorry, can we see him again? Cause cause Here. cause it, there's a duck in a cheerleading costume. There's Chucky in a Chucky great, doesn't look great either. Chuck, who was Chucky, making these? Chucky's I face is creepy as fuck, but his outfit is kind of cool. It's well, like a yeah, fresh very prince. Dude, yeah. we're opening four more locations. I need eight more band members. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll just. Uh, You're right. Creepy. The keyboardist is like. He looks like Grimace. He looks like Grimace, but he has a yellow belly, which is weird. Yeah. His head looks like a dinosaur, and he's wearing sneakers and, and a, a trucker hat. Yeah, he's like a. a Barney ripoff, and then there's like a dog Woody. Yeah, dog Woody. <laughs> but he's wearing, but his but his shirt is cowboy print. Yeah, which is like kind of, fu it's not cowboy print. <coughs> excuse me, it's cow print. And he's naked. Everybody else has on clothes. He's fully <laughs> fucking naked. He has a cap in his dick out. It's so weird. Wait, <laughs> not in mine. Maybe they are different bands. No, no, he is has on clothes, dude. The dog oh, does. Oh, Mickey's dick is out. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying. I'm <laughs> saying the fucking the <laughs> random dinosaur's dick yeah, is out. Yeah, yeah, the random dinosaur's just everybody naked. else yeah. has on. Everybody else has on full on outfits. <laughs> the cheerleader, Chucky has on pants. I never realized it were pants. There's a fucking Woody <laughs> dog, and then this nigga's dick is out. <laughs> He's just like, what's up, kids? You're like, oh, what the fuck, man? That's what his dick is out, man. My kids can't look at this you shit. Want some tickets? And they have a sign behind them that says, I don't want no tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no tickets. I don't want no tickets. They have a sign behind them that they says, They have the shittiest prices, too. Munch's Make Believe Band. I see that. I, if, I, if you had. And then they called us crazy. We saw the band. They said it was Make <laughs> yeah. Believe. Yeah. We can all see it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I crazy or what? <laughs> it's the same, oh, man. I just, I just, so, so we're supposed to imagine that, like, in real life, this guy's just playing drums in the back of his pizzeria, and he's imagining 
that a dog is playing a guitar and a piece of cheese. He's obviously a crackhead. <laughs> and 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 I there's, think this whole establishment is a duck. Believe. Cheer. I imagine. Oh, I just want to. Oh, Chris, let's make the homeless businessman <laughs> him. <laughs> That's, it's it's all in his mind. Right in the pizzeria. Yeah, yeah. And the duck cheerleader is the strangest thing to make up in your mind. What is she, she does? Does she not even have an instrument? I'm sure. She, oh, instrument? Yo, you're right. She doesn't no. even play. The Holy she shit! Sings. She does not have she an instrument. Pom -pom. Cheerleader. Oh, those just look like big hands. She do got big hands. <laughs> I just think it's duckest. Yeah, so it's only really just a drummer because I mean, Chucky don't Chucky play an instrument yeah, either. He talks into a microphone. He just sings. Yeah, yeah talks to a mic. He's like an MC. So it's a guitar, a set of drums, and a uh, and a keyboard. And then she has no. They get yeah. They give her nothing. This was the most sexist. They say you're not ready for an instrument, sweetheart. <laughs> Just stand they like, there. They were like, here, give take the guys these. instruments. I've never played the keyboard, but you can still play better than yeah, her. Yeah. I It'll played for ten you. years, sweetie. Who was talking to you? <laughs> take Put the on this cheerleading outfit and get to clapping. <laughs> It's like it's so. Like, this is the times we grew up in. First of all, did the band ever go away? No. So, like, if you walked into Chuck E. Cheese today, the band would still be there. It That's would, the fucking yeah, problem, Chuck E. Cheese. You be. didn't want to make money. Yeah. You're bankrupt. You're a billion in the hole. Yeah. I went, I went to a Chuck E. Cheese a couple years ago. At the, all right. At, at the end <laughs> of the, did you go along? At the end of the first Chicken Watch <laughs> video, we celebrated at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, that was the Burbank one. In yeah. a hilarious turn of events. But I don't believe there was a van. Uh, a, a van. A, a band. band. They were. It was, <laughs> there was a band, though. There was a band. <laughs> 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 it the was, white one out front. It was I I took my niece like oh really yeah, and oh the and the band was yeah, still there yeah oh I was actually kind of disappointed that there was did you take your band? niece Chris no I literally no, it, was me, for a video. it was just it was, me and Keith. I took his key oh you said that. okay cool. But uh, but I also hit three one thousands in a row on ski ball that yeah. day and I'd love to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> man if you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh I was so good at ski ball that day oh, I believe you man. <laughs> I just want to brag about that. You mean 10,000? Uh, yeah, 10,000. Like, I hit the corner one every single time. Because 1,000 when it just goes down, right? Was I it thought it was 100, 200. I don't fucking know. Depends on where you go. Dave and Buster get you 1,000. Mm. Chuck E. Cheese used, as I, when you grow up, you realize Chuck E. Cheese is shit. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like one of everything. You got to wait your turn to play shit. Mm. Everywhere else you go, like Dave and Buster's and stuff, like when you grew up, you were like, this is better. This is a real arcade leaves. Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese was like, we got one machine and it might not work. It's like a, it's a Chuck E. Cheese arcade. didn't evolve. Yeah. It no, never they evolved. Never they still got it, the ball pit. It they never still got evolved. The, yeah. yeah. The ball pit has four balls in it now. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a pit anymore. It's just like, we got four balls. You can kind of throw them at like each feet. other. <laughs> yeah. Ball pits were everywhere in the 90s. Play, oh, my God. oh, yeah. Play plays? Yeah, McDonald's, McDonald's play place? place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, oh, a, a fucking Happy Meal and, and lost in the crevice of a fucking <laughs> yeah. disgusting cum pit <laughs> that the employees use after work. You think we're stupid employees? We know you're fucking in these playhouses. <laughs> oh my god, you think? <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. Employees? Oh, one hundred percent for sure. Are you serious? I guess. Oh man. Uh, w I feel like there was a new play place built when I was a kid and like it was for for a minute when I was like six it was like this spot oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. so you'll pull like, up there. Like, can we go to McDonald's specifically for that play place oh, and I remember shit. one time I was in there and somebody had gotten diarrhea in the ball oh, oh my god did you ever go back uh, like uh, yeah the next day <laughs> uh, it was the spot <laughs> <laughs> I came we back were, there five hours my, later. My town wasn't getting new <laughs> playgrounds. I was the kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, speaking of childhood, let's hear about that kid. Oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Solved a mystery. Okay. Boy six cracks open robbery case by reeling in sunken safe from Lake. Let's see. There's all these ads. Hold on. Hey, how'd you get into being a detective? By mistake? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, okay. this is the, like, I feel like there are Hollywood producers that are, like, already like, we need to make this movie! <laughs> Encyclopedia <laughs> Brown meets Wisconsin. <laughs> it's like a little stand by me. It's like a classic film of, like, and then the kid was just fishing and found himself away into a murder. 
Let's see. A six-year-old boy helped crack open a nearly decade-old robbery case when he reeled in a locked safe from the bottom of South Carolina Lake. Knox Brewer of Johns Island took up magnet fishing and began hunting for metal objects underwater as a way to pass time during the coronavirus pandemic. His family members told WCIV-TV this week, uh, the boy was out with his family at Whitney Lake this month when the magnet attached to, his, uh, attached to his line stuck to something heavy in the mud below. The news outlet reported, with the help of a bystander, Knox pulled in and pried open what turned out to be a waterlogged lockbox containing debris covered, uh, debris covered jewelry and credit cards, as well as a checkbook, according to a video of the discovery. I knew the right thing to do was go ahead and call the local authorities, get them involved and try to solve the mystery, the child's father, Jonathan Brewer, told the outlet. Authorities determined the sunken safe belonged to a woman who lived across the street from the lake. She said it had been stolen from her home eight years ago, the outlet reported. While most of the expensive items had been taken, the find had still turned out to be a valuable catch, according to Brewers. Uh, they said that they were, un able, they were able to reunite her charms from an old bracelet. That's going to be a so, great movie. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> how long is this film? Three minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it's the dad story. He's yeah. like, this is so exciting. The kid's like, I just like magnet. Yeah. What would, what would you do if your kid found that? And then it was like, really like, like, let's wait. Did, did uh, Was it connected to a murder or no, just a robbery? No, it's just, just trinkets. a fucking let's robbery. Say, let's say it was connected to a murder though. Okay. okay. And is and, it a gun? <laughs> what do we find here? Maybe you find a gun, like uh, part of me wants to stay ahead, but I don't know if that's too much. Okay. But then like, if you're like in a fun place with your, with your kid and then you find a box and you're like, Ooh, it's treasure. And you open it up and Is you're like, hit? it's either a like head bones. or a gun or something yeah. incriminating. Like how much do you continue to share with your kid? What do you mean? Oh, like, like, like is, a fucking, the is it a head? If I opened up a box and it was a head in front of my child, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta talk about the head. I can't. Well, I can't. I mean, if he sees the head I can't already, act yeah. like the head doesn't exist. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, well, let's say you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nothing, whoa, nothing. It's a man. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's like, I saw oh, the yeah. head, Dad. I'm 18. <laughs> 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 nothing. It was not a head. <laughs> I no. want to shield you. No, no I, I, well, I, I think at first I thought you were opening it alone before you showed your kid. <laughs> yeah, right. But I think it's funnier if you open it with, <laughs> with your, your kid, kid. Yeah. <laughs> and then deny its existence. <laughs> okay, if you open it up in front of your kid and it's a gun, you can act like it's nothing. You like it's a gun. Okay. <laughs> bow, 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 <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, throwback. No, no, I would take the, <laughs> I would take the gun, you know, and maybe turn it in or whatever. I probably, just, honestly, if I found a gun, Chris, I probably just throw it back in the ocean. Oh, you would just throw it back in. The what ocean. the fuck am I going to do with the what gun? What if you were about to solve a murder case? I don't have anything to do with this murder. How long ago? How old does the gun look? Does it look like a new gun? Because first of all, the prints are probably wiped off of it and it's thrown in the water. I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're gonna get the print off of it. You're gonna really find a gun at the. I mean, they can find a checkbook back in and a checkbook. Let's say you also <laughs> let's say you find all that stuff and a gun. Because I'm like, if the checkbook you can tell it's a checkbook, then I guess it's not wet. Inside, Honestly, you know if I, mean? I saw the checkbook, I saw the name, I saw the gun, I might Google it. <laughs> <laughs> no real shit. I might wave out your sons right there. <laughs> I'm okay. Google it in front of him. I'd be like, hey, hold this gun and check my I like Google this son. <laughs> now Google the person's name. I, I might look into it. There might be some mafia shit, and I might be like, I'm good, fam. <laughs> Throw back. It's going back in the ocean. What yeah. are you gonna tell your son? It has nothing to do. I threw it back in the ocean, son. What do you say? When we catch guns, we throw no, we, them. We're returning it home. How old is this son? Uh, I think he's six. If he's, oh, okay, he's six, if, yeah. If he's six, it's easy. Six-year-olds are smart now. So what, what do you say? I'd be like, yeah, that was probably a fucking murderer's gun, kid. And I don't fuck know it. who the fuck that person is. And kid. they might murder us. Oh, so the best thing for me to do God. is to put this gun back in the ocean to keep you safe. <laughs> do you want to die, son? <laughs> He really is a concerned father. <laughs> My son's like, I don't want to die. And I'm like, good. Guns go back in the, the water. water. <laughs> uh, that's literally what I was afraid of the kid feeling like. And I was like, how would you shelter him from that? And you were like, I wouldn't. This is the <laughs> this is a real world. He found guns in a lake and he might be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you being so? So what are you doing? You find a gun in the ocean in front of your son. 
You think the gun could be con- First of all, I don't like you. Let me tell you, Karen. I don't like you because you feel like somehow this murder has something to do with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, <laughs> my, for I, sure. I am totally the star I'm of my own film for here. For sure. I'm totally the star of my own film here. And if like if there is credit card information and this person, I'm I'm also gonna research it, but like I'm expecting to like go like, oh my god, this person is involved with a murder. And if I realize that, I think my six year old son, I think I'm gonna like hide it from him and be like this is you know when you find something like this you just you got to give it i think i would say to the police it's so weird in this context because now it feels like the police are the bad guys <laughs> and the like, police did you give it to the police the police like um we threw it there yeah. for a reason the police are like to cool a gun. no they're like we threw it there for a reason we need you to leave our guns alone chris put it back Bring it back. <laughs> like, give you a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Don't recover our guns again. Yeah. We killed a black man with that gun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I was <laughs> That yeah. was implied. I was thinking that yeah. as well. <laughs> that was implied, guys. <laughs> that's what I put together. Now too. everybody's just awkward, like, Sterling, we hate it here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. That's what the police do, guys. <laughs> Shit. All right, next story. Uh, uh, the monkey steals coronavirus patient blood samples. That monkey uh, knows something. But we don't have to get into that. But I will say that monkey knows something. And I don't think For I'm sure. alone in thinking that. And <laughs> the man faked wife's disappearance so she'd avoid prison. That's that's real love if you ask me as well. A West Virginia woman and her husband faked her disappearance by pretending she plummeted from an overlook as part of a scheme to keep her out of having to go to prison, authorities said. Julie Wheeler and Rodney Wheeler were arrested Tuesday on multiple charges, including conspiracy and giving false information to West Virginia State Police. Mm-hmm. State police said Julie Wheeler reported, uh, was reported missing Sunday by her husband and 17-year-old son. The family claimed Julie Wheeler had fallen from the main overlook at the New River George, Gorge National River. Uh, National Park Service Ranger Leah Perkowski said, uh, oh, that's what she said. Authorities searched for Julie Wheeler for days but found her Tuesday alive and well hiding in a closet in her home. A criminal. That's con- it. That was her brilliant plan. Right? Damn. You, I didn't <laughs> think you were going to check my house. <laughs> the closet. Yeah. I thought I looked like a broom in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. A criminal complaint said Rodney Wheeler and his son planted items at the Grandview Overlook to fake Julie Wheeler's disappearance. It's unclear whether the son will face criminal charges. Julie Wheeler uh, ple- pleaded guilty to federal health care fraud in February after investigation into pill mill clinic operations. She'll be sentenced uh, for that charge on June 17. Okay. Man, how much time was she really going to do? What, that's it? That's not, we don't get inf- more information? From that's that? literally a whole article. Fuck. We hate where, it where, let's follow the money. That's my question. Why are they faking they this mean? one? Why are they f- faking this To avoid being death? sentenced so on a charge of federal health care fraud. Oh, for fraud. She didn't yeah. want to go to jail, bro. How much she gonna go? I mean, how long is she gonna go in for I didn't, fraud? It doesn't say how long, but I'm sure. It she didn't want to go to jail, so she they, she was like, "How can we get it?" He was like, "If you die, you don't have to go to jail." That is something I read on yeah. the internet. I'm yeah. That <laughs> and she easy. was like, "All right, we well, can then, try it." He was like, "I'll kill you," and she was like, "No, let's fake my death." Oh, All right, man. that's an option too. Yeah, you know, that's an option as well. You know that big closet downstairs? I what have if you idea. hid in it? <laughs> <laughs> for like five days. <laughs> I'll give you food. We'll say you're stuff. dead. You'll hide in the closet. What could go wrong? Uh, and so now the guy's being charged. I'm but, sure the guy's but being charged. But I don't think she, not she sure hid in the closet, though, Chris. I think she was like in her house. And then when they came looking no, for her. No, they said she was found in the closet in her house. I'm about oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I think <laughs> when they came looking for her, she, oh, she got hid. in the closet, gotcha, guys. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't think she was in the closet. Oh. I think she was probably at home oh, just watching shit. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, Mom, the police are here. And she was like, I'll get in the closet. I'm supposed to be dead. <laughs> the son was like, I know. I, I hope that come up with the plan. <laughs> now you're all going to jail over what? <laughs> How long know. was mom gonna do time? Also, the household must really fall apart when mom's not there. We have the bachelor, um, uh, the first black bachelor ever. Do you have any funny things about the bachelor? I don't know if I'll have that many funny bachelor. things to say. Do you watch the bachelor? Um, I've seen the bachelor. No, I just think it's funny that every, every white company now is just being like, we're going to do whatever we can to make black people happy. Like we had to fucking burn down buildings to get a bachelor. (laughs) 
We had to burn shit down to get a bachelor. Guys, maybe we and should. you don't think white privilege is real? <laughs> we can't get a bachelor? <laughs> God damn. No black men eligible to be a goddamn bachelor until a building. Everyone calm down. We'll give you a bat like we were gonna be okay with that. Finally, and listen. Like black people as a community was like, finally they hear us out wow. and, and fulfill our <laughs> our need of a black bachelor. This is what we've been waiting on. I don't know. Do you watch The Bachelor? I, I've seen a few seasons of The Bachelor. Do you? Okay. So I'm I'm definitely familiar Are with you the happy that they have progressed to getting a bachelor? I feel like it's more like there's like a there's like a, I see like an executive room of white executives and they're all watching the riot like the like most like like burned down part of the riots yeah. and they look and they go like looks like we gotta choose the black guy. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel like I was proud as a black man knowing that we hadn't had a bachelor. <laughs> and, for them, and for them to give us one now, I'm like, ah, this feels like a step backwards. <laughs> I I'm actually always consciously surprised at how few black people there are in The Bachelor. I have never even watched. It's not our show. It's always it's like there's one. Show. There's one black person, and they're usually um, I don't know. How, they're they're you can say it, on the whiter end. Of, uh, <laughs> there you go. They're be, just their behaviors PC. aren't as black as I like. <laughs> Is as as black as I enjoy. No, I'm joking. Is uh, that the wrong thing for me to say? No, you're fine, Chris. I don't know. We're no, just, just, we have great explained. open conversations on this podcast. We've already discovered you were racist a long time ago. But uh, you're yeah. figuring it out. I'm joking. No one thinks you're racist, Chris. Calm <laughs> down. I <laughs> hope not. I'm, well, you just drank that one and said, oh, God, we're uh, here again. In the <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I do not think you're racist, but we're not here again. Uh, no, I just don't think that we watched The Bachelor like that. So, like, I don't know. We were like, we need a black bachelor. But I do think it's funny that every company is trying to save face right now so we get a black bachelor. It's funny to me. I don't fucking know. That is funny. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we don't care about that. So <laughs> we ask y'all Wait. for it. We're like, well, we didn't defund the police. <laughs> but you did. How do you guys feel? <laughs> black bachelor. <laughs> We're like, all right, that's, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. I guess. I, I mean, we I, can't I, promise to stop killing blacks, <laughs> but have we introduced you guys to Matt? <laughs> <laughs> He's all right, black tell black me about man. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the bastard has gotten out of hand. <laughs> like, what the fuck? like, not that it was ever a realistic premise, but like, I guess there's like 25 people. It's like kind of like Survivor, like changed as a game once like people saw seasons of Survivor and they were like, oh, this is how you play the game. Yeah. So at the beginning and like the first meeting, they all have to meet the guy and then he's going to eliminate people. So there's like 27 people. So they walk up now with like, like they have like let's make a deal props and they like oh. have a surfboard on the bachelor and, oh. and they're like hey i'm a surfer from the uh, kansas city and somebody like comes in a in a dinosaur <laughs> well come costume. on down on the price is right <laughs> That's what it feels. It feels like it used to be like you meet Drew all these Curry's people like do you want this rose or a chance to win $10,000. <laughs> $10,000. Okay, I'll take the rose. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, uh, I've never watched the Bachelor. I guess our version of The Bachelor was a love of, flavor of love. Love of flavor of love is... Flavor of Love came out the gate like knowing that this was absurd. You know? Yeah, they were like, it was amazing. They were like, Flavor's not gonna learn their names. <laughs> Let's just let him say stuff. Instead, he's gonna call them things, whatever based, he wants, based on the first time he sees them. I don't think that that was all improv. I flavor. candy. You know what? You remind me of candy. <laughs> I don't know. I wow. Wow. That's I like crazy. lollipop, but booty might be the one who has my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, they're always like random. Flav, that's booty. You're forgetting her name. That's booty. I love yeah. them like jumping in because you know he forgot their names. Like <laughs> yeah, for sure. They were like, that's booty. That one's booty. You're calling her the wrong name. What did I call that one again? <laughs> oh, you got a booty too, though. <laughs> 
No, and then and then he call, he just improved to calling a girl in New York, and then she became the next Flavor Flav. Yeah, and then we had what? I feel like those were we had real chance of love, which we came from her show. I love New we York. Had, I love New York. We had for the love of Ray J, right? The, for the love of Ray J. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. How did Ray J just not have a pun in his? Because he's Ray J. <laughs> he didn't need one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ray J was good then too. You had Rock of Love. Rock of Love. Brett Michaels. Who else had one? Um, Ellen DeGeneres. Te- uh, double <laughs> shot of love with Tila Tequila. Oh shit. How did Tila Tequila come up so quick? In the she was game? a mob space. She was a mega oh, star yeah, mob space. space. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe I remember that. Yeah. She's a mega star mob space. Yeah. And then she had a sex tape drop and then they like put her on MTV. And it was like a bisexual. It was a bisexual one. Yeah. Yeah. That be... was, that was, that was pretty toasty back then. That one was. That one it was. It was like, whoa. Yeah. If, during, during those times, dating? she was making out with everybody. Yeah. And you were like, damn, that's crazy. Seemed a little exploitive of bisexuality, I think, then I am now. But that's okay. It was like what? a sexy Why? MTV game. Well, it was very much like, she likes guys. It's like a fetishization mm. of bisexuality. But also, she liked but guys and girls. Actually, that's, I get it. But she liked guys and girls. I, I think it was good. I she think was overall, one, it was good. Yeah, overall, she was wild. Was she was a wild girl. <laughs> All right. What it still is. Yeah, she's she's probably, do she's we know what Tila Tequila's doing? She's going doing on those today? crazy rants. Does Tila like, Tequila want to come on Wine and We? She's I racist as fuck, Tequila right? Tila Tequila's a, cons- a conservative a racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bring yeah. her on the show. That'd be hilarious. I would love to have Tila Tequila on the show. Would I? No. I think it's interesting. I, I don't she, like to give that person yeah. a platform, but I also like to talk to them. I, I don't know. Where do you fall on that? Um, I think we talked yeah. about this and we kind of It's tough that. sometimes. Like sometimes you're like I want to I want to interview you, but I'm scared I want to punch you in the fucking mouth too. <laughs> so I should probably not interview you. I'm just worried about amplifying somebody. Yeah. Like Joe Rogan had like Alex Jones on his podcast and just kind of like I got what he was doing. He just wanted to listen, but he was like, "Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah." And then people were like, "You're validating Alex Jones and amplifying his message." And yeah. He was like, "I think Alex Jones is crazy." <laughs> yeah so what do you want to do you want to bring crazy people on the show i i think it's fine i think it's cool to do that i yeah um i don't know i think i don't know i think rogan gets black for it but i think you could give somebody the wrong pot for him absolutely no i think uh, i think rogan does a good job i think he's also such a good conversationalist that he lets people talk sure and i think that like when you're really good at somebody like charlamagne will bring people on the show he doesn't agree with but he's gonna hit you with the hard-hitting questions immediately Mm -hmm. and make you feel uncomfortable where he lets you know what side he's on i think rogan kind of lets you just talk Mm -hmm. he's like i don't let you just talk and i don't necessarily agree with you but i'll let people make their own decision at home Mm -hmm. versus charlamagne lets you know what side he's on very clearly yeah so it's just interesting everyone has a different style yeah, I don't get mad at anybody for any of it. I think we would have different styles. I think it would depend on who was on the show as well, on if it's something that's connected directly to us. If we're like, hey, this is something that's like really I'm passionate about, and I have to like be professional to this person who's saying this fucking insane shit. But this is my job, I guess. I don't know. Like having like Candace and Zoe on the show, I don't know if I do a great job with Candace. You Owen know what I show. mean? Like in this show, we might sit there and like be cool with her at the end and then we're making her look cool and we're like wait who would be cool with her i wouldn't be cool with her i wouldn't be cool with her but you could get in a conversation <laughs> nice. with somebody where like oh well you change the subject you start talking about rugrats yeah but i think she would make it about something else where i'd be like this is why no, i don't fuck yeah, with I, you I, I, I you ruin rugrats bitch this is why i don't fuck with you <laughs> i mean i can just get into it yeah, yeah. Okay. go for it Um, as the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department launched an investigation into the hanging death of a black man in Palmdale, the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department said on Saturday there were no indications of foul play in the hanging death of another black man in, Victor- in Victorville last month. Palmdale is about 60 miles northeast of downtown Los Angeles. Victorville is about 50 miles east of Palmdale. San Bernardino Sheriff's uh, Department spokeswoman Jody Miller said deputies responded around 7 a.m. on May 31st to a report of a man who hanged himself near a homeless uh, encampment in Victorville. He was later identified as 38-year-old Malcolm Harsh. A death investigation is being conducted, Miller wrote in an email to the Desert Sun. There were no indications at the scene that suggested foul play. The cause and manner of death are pending. In a statement, Harsh's family said that they were concerned that the investigation was taking a long time and said they regarded his death as suspicious. 
He didn't seem to be depressed to anyone who truly knew him, his fa the family said. Everyone who knew our brother was shocked to hear that he allegedly hung himself and don't believe it as true, as well as the people who were there when his body was discovered. The explanation of suicide does not seem plausible, the family added. According to the family, a deputy called to confirm the death and said a USB cord was used in the hanging. The sheriff's department did not provide more details about the incident. In a statement, Harsh's family said his, fam uh, his body was found hanging from a tree. There was blood on his shirt, but there didn't appear to be any physical implications as a scene, uh, at the scene to suggest that there was a struggle or any visible open wounds at the time. Um, then it goes into the Victorville. More than 1,500 people have signed an online petition requesting the Sheriff's Department and City of Victorville and San Bernardino to conduct an investigation into his death. Uh, let's see if they go to the next one. It definitely has to be more than that now. Yeah. Like way more than that now. Okay, and then in Palmdale, authorities are investigating the death of a 24-year-old Robert Fuller, a black man found hanging from a tree near City Hall when they originally described as an apparent suicide. That prompted concern and outrage in the community. A passerby reported seeing Fuller's body around 3 a.m. Wednesday. Emergency personnel responded and found that he appeared to have died by suicide, Los Angeles County Sheriff's officials said. Fuller's death had generated intense scrutiny, especially after nationwide protests rebunking the police's uh, killing of Floyd. On Saturday, hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Palmdale, a city of 150,000, marching from the park where Fuller's body was found to the sheriff's station. Many carried signs that said justice, justice for Robert Fuller. More than 100,000 people signed an online petition demanding a full investigation into Fuller's death. Community members confronted city officials at a contentious news briefing Friday, asking why they were quick to label his death as a suicide and demanded an independent autopsy. Mm -hmm. I, post <coughs> I posted a video about that uh, earlier at the actual city hall with the actual uh, conversation. Them just saying, you guys need to stop. Uh, irresponsibly putting this out as a suicide where you have nothing that shows this was a suicide. And they're like, um, you know, you guys are just been being irresponsible with your words. Like you're not, you're trying to lead the community to believe this is a suicide so it can be swept under the rug when we know that's probably not the case. I think another thing to point out was, I think was it yesterday or two days ago that lynching became an official hate crime. Only, um, yeah, in 2020. Really? Yeah, in California. I think I think it was a nationwide passing. People are also speculating that this was a fuck you to the house, to the government for making lynching a hate crime. Think that um, a lot of lynchings happen in this country. You know, not are all are caught on video or or. or you know, people can necessarily, they, you know, they leave people in the woods all the time and people cover this kind of stuff up. And it's been happening since the beginning of time and being in this country. So I think that now them just making it a hate crime is crazy as fuck. And also I think that you're telling a um, certain individual who has probably gotten away with this for so many years, you can't do that thing you do anymore. Or, hey, man. Yeah, we know we had said it was like illegal and stuff. Now they're like really cracking down on it, man. They're watching us. We can't do that thing anymore. And it's like, I don't, I don't even know how like we're just in 2020 saying like this is a hate crime, like the it's crazy of an individual. And it, it's it, it's it's so like sad and disheartening that over and over again the police continue to do the same things and and we think it was i i also believe that maybe maybe it was the source that i read and maybe it wasn't the police's words but they they said it was a suicide and suicide has happened a lot during COVID 19 and we need to and they just like try to change the story try to make it yeah to just, talk about suicide during yep. COVID 19. 100 so, also not to sound like an asshole black people we don't hang ourselves yeah. Also, also, if you, you don't think hear about, about us hanging ourselves, and if you think about anybody hanging themselves, they do it in their fucking garage or in their house. Yeah, uh, you, no, don't people use don't hang USB themselves cord. from a tree yeah. in the middle of what city the hall. USB cord. Nobody. No, they said in a, I know. And I know. Oh, I'm yeah. saying, yeah. like, how tough is that yeah. fucking USB? Yeah. Like, like, exactly. Like, what the hell? Okay, yeah. I, I, I have a problem with the USB cord thing too because either 
the author of the article thought it was an interesting detail or they chose to make it sound spontaneous even though you could never check your hang yourself with just a USB no. cord. So there there were more details to it, but just the only USB cord. Cord. And this cord. nigga, you said he homeless? Make it sound. Why the fuck I got a USB also, cord? Also, USB cord yeah. is long enough exactly. to hold. What am I even plugging this shit into? I'm homeless. You have a 12 foot long USB right, cord? Right, yeah. That exactly. doesn't sound like something a homeless person has. Well, also that it was next to an encampment sounds that it was it was literally hunting a vulnerable person. Maybe. And then I, all right, let's say, Let's say that I don't know anything about the the one the Palmdale man's story, but let's say that he committed suicide and he decided to hang himself from a tree in City Hall. There is no way that suicide is not going to have a note attached to it. No, fuck that. There's because no way that sounds so no. significant of a no. suicide. Yeah, unless you're making you're a wrong. statement, not right? wrong. Yeah. There's no way it's not going to have video. Right. Oh, of yeah, course. Yeah. We're at City Hall, of Chris. Of course. Yeah. Where's the video, guys? Yeah. Where's, where's the, the video then? You have videos everywhere. The Stop lights, everything. Yeah. Where's the surveillance? Oh, you don't have it? You know why? Because one of your own did this. That's why you don't have it. Yeah. So just once again, you see a chance for them to be accountable for a law that was just passed. And, and, and no, they decided to go by the code and cover it up. And then it hurts me even more because it's in fucking California, which is supposed to be the most progressive of the States. And it's just like, no, this is just a gang everywhere. It's a gang gang. It's a, and it's everywhere. Gang gang. That's what America is. Gang gang. Yeah. I don't know that. And then I don't know. You shared the So like I, I, they, the media knows nothing about the two men or from what I saw from the articles I read. And then you posted their friends and family social media that was like, this makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what hit me of like, okay. Yeah. Like, no, nobody on the family side was like, oh yeah. Nope. Everybody well, was like, I, no bullshit. This thing happened to my, please don't let this go under the, be under the rug. This is my cousin. This is my uncle. Please don't let this. And you're like, yo, everyone knows this is bullshit. No one's been like, no. If, if look, believe me, if they, if look, black people, we know when our family ain't, if something ain't right, believe me, if it was, they would have been like, yo, we ain't going to front. Yeah, he didn't seem suicidal, but he was going. You would have saw something in it that said he was going through this or this thing was bothered. Like, we'll tell you that much. When motherfuckers are telling you, I don't know what's happening and how this happened, and they mean that shit. Like, you know, this person wasn't suicidal, yo. It just bugs me because it's, it's so blatantly beyond incompetence. Like, yeah. you're not stupid because even a stupid person wouldn't investigate it and determine that it was suicide. Yeah. yeah. Like they just, Oh, guess he killed himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just like you would think like d during the time that the country is under a microscope, you would think everyone would be like, be your best behavior. But it's almost like cops and everybody else is just like, no, it's time to go harder. And you're like, what the fuck? Such a weird reaction. Like, how about you calm the fuck down? It's Let us forget. Make, make us believe change is coming, at least. You motherfuckers are going harder. There are so many neutral people that would be like, I just want peace. And the fact that the cops return twice as hard is like, it's really like confusing. Even just as a it political It shouldn't be move. confusing. It should be like, yo, the cops are on bullshit. Right. It should be confusing by this time. No, but even even the 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 reaction is so like like in the past you were saying like a few weeks ago they're faking it. They're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, this is operating this way, but we're not saying that directly. Like it feels like they're not even trying to fake it anymore. Oh, they're just like, saying. we run this shit. Yeah, well, we don't care. They, that's what they are. Well, their their leader is doing that as well. That's why I think. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Because if they really cared about the law, they'd be like, well, this That's is a them. brand new yeah, law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, yo, you, you guys are crazy. You guys are not even listening at this point. You're just getting riled up over just, they're just watching inflection in voices. They're just, oh, he went up. I go up. We're down. We're down. And I'm back up. And it's like, how about you look at the fucking news and see what's going on and stop moving off of just reactions. Actually, Don't be too 
Nice. <laughs> it's what always echoes in my head. Him talking to all the police and all the police watch that ceremony. Some of them watched it live and some of them watched it later. But they were like, that's what that guy fucking supports. Yep. You're, you're empowered by that. You're emboldened. You're dumb. Look at cute my baby boy. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's shitty. And it's also shitty that it's happening in multiple places. I was like, is this connected? And you were like, no, this is just a reaction. Wait, connected to each like other? Like, you think these two th- towns, oh, those 16 two, miles Those away. two could be, but I don't think they are. I think that this has just been happening for a long time. And that, like, this stuff is just not... I think this stuff is all... I think, again, I hate I to, think I internet hate to, is fueling these groups. I hate to sway you or make you look at news and everything this way, but you know this. I think right now it's hot. It's hot. This what has been you, happening. Oh, to report it. Bro, lynchings just got outlawed. Lynchings are happening. Black people want rights. Let's write. Lyn- oh, you got a lynch story? Let's get it in the fucking newspaper. That'll get some clicks. That'll get some clicks. Finally. Let's get, let's get it go. No, not finally. Because it wasn't really getting clicks. I, oh, you mean finally? I don't know. Hang finally somebody get some in the clicks. middle no, of the city. Some clicks. I thought you were saying finally we have a lynch story. Like They have a lot of lynch stories. No, They're finally like, we got clicks. Lynches are in hot right now. Come on, people. What is hot? Looters. Looters. Give me more looters. Give me this. Lynchings. Okay, lynchings. So are do hot. you think, let's say five years ago, this same story would have happened? You think they would have just been like, suicide? No need to report it in the It might not even been in the newspaper. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it was a suicide. Why would you report a suicide? Yeah, because we've been calling them suicides accept- for a long time. Accepted as a suicide. Yeah, that dude went there and hung himself there in that specific place. And he even lit himself on fire. It was crazy. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'm yeah. just saying. This is what this country is. It's like, I don't want to lie. I know it's Jesus. It's like, it's hard. It's hard to talk about, but it's also like, this is what happens. This is what goes on. And they fucking protect their own and make it okay. And this it's is a never weird, stopped. So I guess what I'm saying, or what I was saying before the show, is that there's this like weird subsect of psychopaths that get off on um on hurting people and they're like they're bad people right they're like criminals they're maybe like 10 percent of people eight percent of people i don't know but like a lot of them are cops Mm -hmm. so then by disbanding the police you're gonna make these people who are getting their like dopamine fix of hurting other people off being a police i guess you're right they're gonna i said they're gonna turn into criminals and you said well then they'll be arrested (laughs) and then they'll go to jail and i guess you're fucking right yeah, well, we, hope. we hope. I hope. I All just right. hope the but no, I think their I mean, criminal enterprise doesn't become too powerful like the mafia, no. even though it's illegal. No, just trying to just trying to get some twenty twenty one bingo in. I think the what, police becomes I think an independent what makes mafia. You, I think what makes the police powerful though are 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 uh, uh, um are, are is money. It's money. It's the money behind it that makes them powerful. You take the money away, they're not as powerful. Also, on top of that, I would like to look into the laws and the different things of like making sure that police officers are licensed. Are they, are they still going to be licensed to carry when they lose their badge and when they're not police officers anymore? I think you have to go through the proper protocol to become licensed to carry everything else around it from psyche checks. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think you should like lose your we are not police officers anymore, but we somehow have all the rights still mm. can't have that. No. No. Hey, did you know this? Because I saw a tweet about this. And have you ever heard of this? Do you know that there's a pin that you can put in your wallet uh, if you're a, like a family member or a friend of a policeman? Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And then, all right, yeah. Because I've heard some people surprised about that for the first time. Sorry, oh, so no. there's a pin you can put in your wallet. And then if you get pulled over, you kind of just like show that pin as you open the wallet. And it's just a little bit of a code like, I know a cop. Yeah, but there, there are also things you can say. Yeah. Yeah, there are a whole bunch of ways. Which which, yeah. which is uh, just like total confirmation that it's like a gang. <laughs> like yeah. that it's like a, a that they treat theirs differently. I would try to run that in Chicago. I'd be like, yo, my dad's a fireman. <laughs> Nigger, why are you talking back to me? I'm 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 joking. But no, I would literally like try to, as a kid, be like, oh, let me see if I can sneak in my dad's a fireman and just see what they say. 
and uh, it nah. might work a little bit. It it would work like a little bit. Like I guess I didn't get arrested, but <laughs> but like I would still get tickets and stuff. Or like you still like it left you off with a warning, I guess. But like yeah, no, I mean there's definitely pain. It's an institution. Yeah, people know. Yeah, people know that. Yeah, that was like that. Was, well, also in Chicago with my high school. If like you mentioned to a police officer that you like went to my high school, they kind of let you out. Oh really? Because they'd be like you, more than likely you're in their heads, kid. you're a good kid. Yeah, they'd be I've like, tried oh, to, I've tried to a convince a, a number of police officers that I'm a good kid, and it didn't work. Interesting. <laughs> this wine was good. You didn't like it, huh? I do like it. It was like juicy. Wait, well, I fucking said it was good twice, and you just looked at the wine and at I me like I was an idiot. It. You were like, mm. it's not like sharp and deep. It's like. It's like on the surface, right? I don't know. You want to learn how to talk about wine this summer? You want to get some wine person? I already know how to talk about wine, bro. Well, then tell me what you think about That's what I've been doing for the past month is practicing my wine thing. When I told you I was going to have something I was going to bring you back and go over on this show, that's me been getting into my wine um, expertise, I guess, or becoming an expert in wine. Wow. I'm in. Why are you doing this as a secret? Because I didn't want you to know, I wanted to just come on the show and surprise you. Bam, he's oh, he's been a sleeper expert. <laughs> wow. Well, tell me what you think about this wine. I don't know if I want to go into this one. <laughs> okay. I mean, Maybe. I can. This <laughs> this I wine think we is should red. Dive into the, the chronosuing and connoisseuring. Of this Ryan wine Lee. is red. Yeah. This wine is burgundy. Oh, I didn't know. Acidity medium. Um, red woods. I actually taste red woods within it. I taste oak. I taste um, actual blackberries. Yep. I feel I those. I taste. It's like jammy. Mm. This wine is from the northern coast of Italy. This wine is uh, mm. He really knows his shit He's really selling me on this shit Damn. He really knows mm. Mm. This wine is The blood of Jesus <laughs> Oh my god This, <laughs> this is my blood this It is, will be given up for one. you um, no, this wine, it, oh, I should have known, but it is from Italy, right? Yeah, it is from Italy. Oh, so how did I know that? That's crazy, because we said it at the beginning of the show. Did you say a northern coast? No, you, you said no, that. No, you Thank said you. that. Thank you. It is a northern coast. Oh. Yep. Wow. I should have also called out. This. It does taste like northern coast, huh? Doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> what if he, like, he was still getting down, like, acidity? <laughs> <laughs> but he knows like geography, geography like crazy. Yeah, northern. Oh, it says you should drink this wine with ravioli, or grilled fillet steak, or pork, Ooh. or cheese, or mushrooms, or just shrooms. Ooh, but no weed. You should drink this wine with ravioli. You should drink this wine. That's not even ravioli. how it goes, Chris. You You're just drink chanting this wine stuff. With ravioli. <laughs> you should. It feels like I want it to be a sample in a song. <laughs> you Why you have both my dogs over there? Wine. Dude, I don't know, man. Your dogs miss Why me. Why is my dog's head in your legs like your that? Your dogs miss me. Get Nucky's head out of your legs like that. Nucky, stop sucking my <laughs> We should just end the show right there. Just That's it. It's just cold gun. Nucky, stop sucking my Just like have the dogs on for it. I'd be like, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, mm. Well, th thanks for tuning in to our show this week. I'll be doing more wine reviews next week, guys. Wow. We should start doing wine reviews. Pop, 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 pop. Zip it up. Zip it out. Black Lives Matter.